Uh, yeah, I uh, whenever I'm asked what's next, I have to I have to think ahead and think back because I've got five books sold and finished at my publisher, and I'm writing another under contract. I'm actually booked up into 2012, and my publisher has told me they don't even want to see anything for a while. But <laughs> I have a, a, a historical western coming out next month called The Branch and the Scaffold. It's a novel about Hanging Judge Parker, a real character from America's history. Um, and I have a second Valentino novel coming out next spring called Alone. Now Frames, the first one, uh, came out this last spring, and basically it's about a film archivist, a fellow who goes all over the world assembling bits and pieces of lost classic films and finds himself solving murder mysteries the same way they're all connected with old-time Hollywood. So it's one for the buffs. And uh, the second one called Alone will have to do with uh, have to deal with Greta Garbo, and had a lot of fun with that one. Um, that series, I, I sold uh, a dozen in that series in short stories to Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine, and these are the first novels using that character. Um, my uh, financial advisor tells me I can actually now um, deduct all the CD, the DVDs, and. Uh, uh, and, and mo motion picture equipment in my, in my home theater uh, from my taxes, but I'm going to approach that very cautiously. <laughs> several brushes, just close enough with Hollywood to get excited about it and to learn not to get excited about it, but the, the closest I got was the one that was most humiliating. Uh, a big time power player in, a, in a California, a producer, uh, who had homes in New York, London, and uh, L.A. Uh, flew me out to uh, New York on his ticket, put me up in a hotel. I spent three days with him talking about doing an original Amos Walker screenplay. And uh, all the time he was on his cell phone, somebody was suing him. That should have been a, an indication. <laughs> it also showed this guy must be really successful. Um, he had done a number of things. He had done Harper. He had done uh, uh, Where Eagles Dare, uh, Angel Heart, a bunch of big-time movies. Uh, and going back, you know, 30, 40 years in Hollywood. Uh, okay, his name is Elliot Kastner, and he's a crook. <laughs> um, but I'm not the only one who, uh, who can back that up. Anyhow, after all this time, he kept saying, so what we got to get in this is plenty of nookie, lots of nookie. And the last thing he said to me as I'm getting on board the plane, he says, nookie! <laughs> I actually cleaned that up. Uh, when I got back home, uh, I called my agent and I said, looks like I really impressed the guy, because I had boned up on screenplay writing and read, read quite a bit about it talked to quite a few people who knew it and even uh, tried my hand at it to see if it was something I could do and I thought I could. Um, and I told my agent, I said, it looks like we really clicked and you know, if, it's pri if the price is right, it looks like this thing's going to go through. And he calls me, my agent, a couple days later, he says, well, it fell through. I said, what happened? He said, you wanted a free screenplay. <laughs> now this guy, his office, uh, he, has a, he had a two-story office in the middle of uh, Rockefeller Center. Um, he was sitting at this beautiful, huge, antique square partner's desk, and his, uh, his assistant is on this balcony at a, at a desk, and over his desk was an original bedsheet-sized poster of The Adventures of Robin Hood, starring Errol Flynn. And I knew something about, you know, what posters are worth. And I told my agent, I said, tell him, if he will give me that poster, I will write the screenplay. But, uh, uh, nothing came through on that. You just never know. It just... Uh, yeah, I get, uh, I'll get uh, buzzes, nibbles now and then, but it's kind of like, uh, you know, when they ask for an option, you, you take the money, you know, and you just forget about it, you know, and just, uh, you know, put that money toward, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the situation that I'm in right now where I can't sell a book for the next five years. Um, but uh, you just uh, kind of take that thing as, as it comes, and, uh, and I hope that something will happen down the line and never get too excited about it. There have been some m many great novels, mysteries, and otherwise that have dealt with social issues. Um, but as far as whether or not the writer is obligated to have a social conscience, I'm one with Vladimir Nabokov. Uh, some, uh, I think some university publication sent him a telegram offering him uh, $2,000 to write 200 words on the subject, D should the writer have a social conscience? And he wired back, no, you owe me 10 cents. <laughs>